I want to thank you so much for inviting me to be here. I have to tell you how excited I am to be here to talk about St. Charbel. But what I want to do tonight is not just talk at you. I want you to get to know this great saint, but I want it to be in a way that helps us to grow in devotion to Jesus and Mary through the intercession of St. Charbel. I don't have notes. We're going to just let the Holy Spirit take it, and we'll open our ears and our eyes and our hearts to hear what it is that God wants us to hear. You know, this is one of the saints that has probably the most miracles in the history of our Catholic Church, and a lot of people don't know that. So let's begin. I'm going to talk to you about my introduction, why and how I got to know St. Charbel, and then we'll talk about who he is, and then I want to share just a couple miraculous healings, and then I'll introduce you to the chaplet prayer, and then we'll close with any questions and that'll be our, the completion of our evening. Well, I was raised in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and my mother is Lebanese, my father's Croatian, and so I was raised in the Maronite Catholic rite. When I was little, St. Charbel was always in our house. My grandfather had migraine headaches severe for 20 years. His head would just be, you know, for, for days on end, he would have severe headaches. And my grandmother had a beautiful devotion to St. Charbel, and there was a little relic on the coffee table. And my grandfather grabbed it, put it on his head, and he, he screamed to God through St. Charbel to please take the pain away. That was the last headache that I remember that he ever had, ever. So who is this great saint? Well, St. Charbel, when he was a little boy, his name was Joseph. And his father died when he was about three years old. He was raised by his mom, who was very devout in the faith, and he had two uncles who were monks. Now, little Joseph Mahluf, when he was a little boy, he, became, he was very devout in his prayer. Even at a, at a small, early age, he would find this little cave area. I'm going to show you a picture of it. And he would go in there, and he would pray. He would bring a statue of the little Blessed Mother, and he would pray for hours, and, the, and the, his friends would oftentimes make fun of him. This is a picture, if you go to Lebanon today, in, the, in his village, Bakafra, this is what the little cave area looked like. One day they were working in the fields and, you know, the, the, the farmland and, and so forth, and there was a wild dog that was chasing his friends, the kids, and little Joseph was praying in, the, in, the little, in his little cave, and they ran. And, and they knew that he was connected to God in prayer. And they, they said to him, you know, help us. And so he stood up, and as the dog was coming, he looked at him and he said, you don't belong here, go away. And the dog's tail went down and he, he walked. That was one of the stories that, you know, that was passed on. He decided to become a monk. Now, his family wasn't thrilled with it. Obviously, they needed him to work in the fields and so forth, but he was inebriated with God. Do you know what that means to be inebriated? To be like intoxicated with God out of joy in being in communication to God. And so finally, at the age of 20, 23, he became a monk. He then became a priest. And then finally, he entered into the hermitage. Now, St. Charbel's life was completely dedicated to the Blessed Mother, to the Holy Eucharist. You know, there are different saints that have different charisms. We don't have any diary written by St. Charbel. We don't have any documented um, quotes by St. Charbel. And if you look up on YouTube and somebody says, you know, this is St. Charbel's voice, it's impossible because he was a monastic. He lived his life in complete communion in prayer. The picture that you see there is not a photograph of St. Charbel, but rather it's a miraculous image. And I'll, I'll talk to you about that in just a moment. But so when St. Charbel entered the monastery, he would spend his entire day and night in prayer. Two things that he would do. His prayer would consist of Eucharistic adoration. And before Mass, he would oftentimes celebrate daily Mass at about 11 o'clock in, in the day in the morning. He would be up from, oh, probably midnight or so, spend the entire night in preparation to celebrate the Holy Eucharist. Then after, he would give thanks to God for five, six, eight, ten hours on end, completely 
just in, in complete communion with God. That's who he was. As a monk, his superiors would often ask him um, to come to the bedside of family members that were sick. And so one time he went to a bedside to the family member of the superior, and she was healed. They knew that he was a living saint, and they asked him, you know, Father Charbel, what did you do? And he would often just say, I, I prayed. So it's nothing more than what you and I have access to. It's just such, it's at a, such a deeper, deeper level. The Eucharist, if we were to define who this great saint is, the Holy Eucharist is who defines who he is. When he lived, nobody knew him. A lot of people even today don't know who St. Charbel Machluf is. But more and more, things are happening, miraculous healings are, are starting to surface. I'm gonna share two with you tonight. But what he did was he united himself to the living God. He totally believed that the Eucharist was the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. And so in the Maronite rite, when you, when you go to the Maronite divine liturgy, oftentimes the Eucharist is not put in the hand, rather it's put on the, on the tongue. It's a way to show reverence to what it is that we're doing. Tonight, if we don't get anything out of tonight, let us ask God to help us to develop a deeper reverence to Jesus in the Eucharist. This great saint died on Christmas Eve. Let me tell you the, the story about it. One night, and it would have been December 16th, 1898, he was celebrating the Divine Liturgy. Actually, it was in the day when he, when he was celebrating it. And during the time that he elevated the Eucharist, he collapsed. He was saying a prayer that is the Father of Truth prayer. It's a beautiful, powerful prayer directed to the Father offering the sacrifice of the Son. And when he collapsed, he was taken back to his cell and he continued to pray those words for eight days until he died on Christmas Eve. When he died in the mountains of Lebanon where his monastery is, it's freezing cold, the snow, it was, you know, there were, I don't know, a foot or two of snow. He was one that would wear the same clothes in the summer as in the winter time. He oftentimes would sacrifice, would eat just pieces of extra toast. I mean, you know, he fasted continuously. His sacrifice was like, like we can't even imagine. They didn't realize how cold his cell was until they entered into it and it was freezing. They brought his body into the chapel, and there was one hermit in that chapel. I'm going to show you a picture of it tonight. That night, there was a bright light that came from the tabernacle and shone on the face of Father Charbel that was in the chapel. There was a light that emanated, and the, the monk that was in there knew without a doubt that this was a holy man who was a saint. Two days later, they buried him, very humble burial, put him in a wooden box, just like all of the rest of the hermits on the hillside there. A few days later, there was a light that began emanating from the tomb. And the people from the surrounding villages began to witness this light. And they started coming, and they didn't know what, it, what exactly was happening. So within 45 days, there were so many people and so much commotion that was happening because this miraculous light that was, you know, shining from his tomb, the, the monastics, the superior, exhumed the body to see what was happening. And his body was completely intact, but not only was it intact, it was only 45 days into it, but he was sweating blood and, and water and like an oil secretion was coming from his pores. Well, he had been dead already. And that continued for over 50, 60, 70 years. People began coming in droves and people were healed on the spot. Blind were able to see. The lame were walking. It was, it was amazing. 
that number of people has never stopped until today. Now, in Lebanon, where his monastery is, the 22nd of every month is a very special day. There was a miraculous healing I'm going to talk about tomorrow of a lady who had a vision. She had a massive stroke, and St. Charbo appeared to her, and you ready for this? And did surgery on her. The carotid was completely blocked, bilateral carotid. She had a massive stroke, and she woke up with two scars, and she was completely healed. But he appeared to her, but he said, on the 22nd of every month, I want you to come celebrate the divine liturgy and, um, in, you know, increase the faith of the people and, you know, welcome them to this place. And so the 22nd is a very special day where people literally from all over the world come. Thousands of people. And what happens, I was there in 2018, I took my mom on pilgrimage, and, and it was great because we went and made sure that we were there over the 22nd. And we stayed there the, the night of. And what happens is they celebrate Mass on the 21st, and then the Eucharistic procession all the way up from the monastery to the hermitage, and then they come back down on the morning of the 22nd, and there's still many, many healings. Beautiful. Not only that, the lady who's still alive, this was the 30-year anniversary, the scar bleeds every 22nd of the month. And so people will take cotton, and, and it's amazing what happens. Okay, let's, let's move to the next slide. So this picture, this miraculous picture that I told you about, I'm going to he let you hear a little video of Father Jim Root, who is talking about this picture. Now remember, there were no photographs at that time. St. Charbel, probably in his whole life, after he entered into the monastery, never looked up. His head was always down. Remember, he took the vow of poverty, chastity, and obedience, and so his life was, he lived it as a hermit the last 17 years, of, 19 years of his life. So it's impossible to have a photo. But in 1950, Father will talk about it. I'll let you hear it. What happened was there were seminarians that went to visit the hermitage, and they took a snapshot. There were five seminarians, and when they developed the photo, I'll show you the original photo, a sixth person appeared. That's how we got the image of St. Charbel. That's how we know who he is. Now, before you play it, you know, sometimes you'll see his name spelled with an S. Sometimes you'll see it with a C. What happened early, early on, the earliest documents that we have from his family, from that I, I mean, I actually have a prayer card for the beatification of Father Charbel. It was always spelled with an S. And then there is a French influence. In Lebanon, they spell it with a C. So it's either S or C. There's not one isn't right or wrong. Let's play this little short video. When he was a seminarian student in Lebanon, went to Anaya and took a picture of the monks outside, lined up against the wall of the monastery. When they developed it, a sixth monk appeared. It was St. Charbel. And it's the picture that everyone uses for his portrait, for his icon. So that's where the picture comes from. And today, there are many, many miraculous healings through St. Charbel's intercession. Some people pray in front of the image and their prayer is answered. Some people use the holy oil that comes from his tomb and there's healings that occur. I'll tell you about one in particular. Some people have an opportunity to venerate the relic of St. Charbel and people are healed. Now let's be very, very clear. Whenever we talk about relics and holy oil, they're beautiful sacramentals. It's God who does the healing, right? We know that the saint is an intercessor, prays for us, just like you pray for me and I pray for you, we pray for each other. Well, we believe that the saints who are with God in heaven pray for us, just like our Blessed Mother, and God hears the prayer. 
one of the things that you'll, that you'll oftentimes hear is that St. Charbel was so holy that, you know, he sacrificed so much for Jesus when he was alive that now whatever he asked for, he gets. I mean, it, that's the kind of, um, like, mentality. It's a deep, deep, raw faith that we believe that, that these saints on our behalf pray for us. So let me talk about a couple healing. You know, as a medical physician, I practice internal medicine here in Arizona as a hospitalist. In 2016, there was a miraculous healing here in Phoenix, Arizona at St. Joseph's Maronite Catholic Church in Phoenix. Let me tell you just a little bit about what happened. Um, I was fortunate enough to be called by Father Wissam to review all of the records of Daphne, and we really scrutinized this case. Well, January 17, 18, 19, the relics were here in Phoenix. There was a woman, 31 years old, who was completely blind. She had gone blind four years prior, had been developing this. She wasn't born blind, but she'd had this medical condition called intracranial hypertension, where the pressure in the brain was so high that it constricted the optic nerve and it was irreversible. So her sister-in-law invited her to St. Joseph's to venerate the relic of St. Charbel. They knew nothing about St. Charbel. I can tell you if you're here tonight, there's a reason you're here tonight. St. Charbel wants to be known. He's a powerful intercessor in the Catholic Church, in the Roman Catholic Church. Not a lot of people know who he is. So Daphne came went to confession, received the Holy Eucharist, and was blessed by Father Wassam with the holy oil from his tomb. And she begged God to heal her. But what I can tell you is that she came in and she said, if you don't do it for me, do it for my children. It was really the last stitch effort. If you don't want to do it for me, do it for my kids. <laughs> so that night she went home about four o'clock in the morning, severe pain in her eyes. It was four o'clock in the morning. I felt my eyes burning. And her eyes were burning. Um, woke up, went to her ophthalmologist, and her ophthalmologist did a thorough exam. We have the records here and um, reviewed all of the records. Interestingly, her vision didn't come back on that first exam. Within 48 hours, when she went to a second <coughs> ophthalmologist, her exam was completely, completely normal. They, they did the test and I couldn't see clearly. My 48 hour, I had 20-20 vision. Now, not only that, but the vision, the, the, the mapping, the visual way that the optic disc looked was completely healed. And I took her to three other medical neuro-ophthalmologists. No explanation. It's documented now in, the, in Anaya at the monastery of St. Charbel. Beautiful testimony. So that's what happened on the 18th of January. So Father Wassam, in his wisdom, thought, well, if since St. Charbel requested that people come on the 22nd, he decided that we're going to do it on the 18th because that's the day that Daphne was healed here. And so he has a healing mass on the 18th of every month here in Phoenix, and people come from literally all over. I remember a couple years ago, there was a woman who flew in from Venezuela and knocked on Daphne's door. Do you remember we, I mean, just amazing, amazing stuff happening right here in our midst. And I can tell you that it's faith that saves us. It's faith that heals us. Just a little bit of faith will move a mountain. That's all that, that, that's all that God is asking of us. Remember I told you I took my mom to Lebanon in 2018, and I brought back the holy oil from the tomb of St. Charbel. Well, I got a call that a friend of mine's daughter had a baby. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and the baby was born with a paralyzed vocal cord. I guess the umbilical cord was wrapped around, and it was paralyzed, and the baby couldn't swallow safely. You know the vocal cord is what protects when you swallow so that the food doesn't go in the lung, right? And it wouldn't, it stayed open, so they couldn't feed her. And so they had to rush her, and when I heard that, it really kind of like hit me like, 
wow, you know, we need to really start praying for this baby because otherwise she's going to die. So it happened that I was going to Pittsburgh that weekend and I thought, I'm going to bring the holy oil. I started praying profusely. Now, for whatever reason, normally I wouldn't do that. You know, we would pray, but for whatever reason, God laid it upon my heart to do this. And even till this day, I can't understand that. I mean, I would like be crying, and that just isn't like me, right? So we prayed for baby Lena, flew into Pittsburgh that night. I went to the hospital, and I brought holy oil on a little Q-tip. So I asked them, I said, I want to come and say a prayer. And they're like, yes, please do that. So I walk in, the baby has the tube in her nose. I can't even remember what I prayed, to be honest with you. I started praying the, the Lord's Prayer. And I put a cross on her forehead with the oil. And the baby started choking like three times. And the mom, and it kind of frightened me. And then my, the mom said, no, it's OK. And everything, you know, it's OK. I said, OK. So I left, literally, within two minutes after that. Well, the next day, the baby passed her swallow test. She was sent home two days later. So let me show you now. The NG tube was removed the next day, and she was discharged three days later. So go to the next slide. I'm going to show you screenshots of the uh, communication, texting communication with the baby's mom. So this is, she said, hi, and I wanted to thank you again for stopping by last night to bring the holy oil. It meant so much to pray with the baby. I honestly feel such a comfort. Thank you for keeping her in your prayers. So next slide. So this is the picture that they sent when the baby was discharged home, now two days later. Lena is going home today. I truly believe in my heart that it is because of the oil of St. Charbel, St. Charbel's prayers. Ever since that day you came, prayed, and put the oil on her, she's been progressing. Words will never be able to express our thanks. Let's go to the next slide. And then, Lena's doing really great eating, gaining weight. I asked her, I said, do you remember she coughed three times? And so she finally, she said, I'm sorry, I didn't respond to your earlier message. I do remember her having three Strider coughs. It's such amazing. It's such a miracle. My mom and I talk about it daily. So let me show you the next picture. And this is baby Lena eating ice cream. <laughs> So, you know, in my heart, I absolutely know that, that God's power is beyond what we can even imagine. Now, is it, is it me doing that? Absolutely not. Is it even St. Charbel? Well, he's a miracle worker. God has gifted him with the gift of miracle. But it's God who does that. And I often think about the parable. Do you know the parable of when the four men are carrying the paralytic, right? And what do they do? They, they can't get in, right? They're, everybody is just so crowded around Jesus. And so what do they do? They go up, put a hole in the roof, and they bring this paralytic down and put him right in front of Jesus. And what does he do? Jesus heals the paralytic. And what does he say? He says, your faith has saved him. Now, or your faith has saved you. But in this particular scripture, Jesus talks to the four men who are carrying the paralytic and said to them, it's your faith that saved him. So the, so the message is, the lesson is, is that we do have access to praying for each other. God hears our prayers and heals and answers our prayers according to his will. Now, there's a beautiful devotion to God through St. Charbel's intercession. And it's called the Chaplet of St. Charbel. There's five Our Father beads with three Hail Mary beads. Okay, so there's three groups of three that are red, poverty, chastity, obedience. And then there's a beautiful white St. Charbel's devotion and love for the Holy Eucharist. And then blue is for our Blessed Mother. And there are two prayers the Father of Truth prayer is the first prayer that we pray when we pray the chaplet. This is a prayer that's part of the divine liturgy. And then the, the, the final prayer is the prayer to obtain graces. So when you want to pray and immerse yourself in a deep devotion to God through St. Charbel's intercession, this is a beautiful prayer to do that. This is called the St. Charbel prayer net. 
And I invite you, if you're interested, to join this beautiful prayer group. What this is, is it's an, it's an app that you would download on your, on your phone. And we're over 400 people literally across the globe. We pray on it live. We do the chaplet every day. There's a lot of information about St. Charbel, devotion to our Blessed Mother, that kind of thing. So I invite you if you're interested, okay? Let's close with a video that I want to show you. This is the original home of St. Charbel in the village called Bakafara. This is where he grew up as a little boy. As we enter in, this is one of the original rooms where St. Charbo and his family grew up. This is the monastery of St. Charbo in Anaya, Lebanon. His body currently is in this place. Many, many miracles occur here. This is a very sacred space in front of his tomb. This is the outside wall of the monastery. And as we enter in, there's a chapel where daily mass is celebrated. This is the miraculous photo where his image appeared in a photograph taken. Many letters verifying miracles around the world. This is the area where St. Charbel toiled and worked in the field. He lived out the rest of his life in this hermitage. This is where he died, in this chapel. The cell of St. Charbel. We see that he slept on the floor using a tree trunk as a pillow. We cannot say that St. Charbel is just for the Maronite Church or just for the Catholic Church. St. Charbel is a saint today for all the world, for all the religions. Because he is near God, he can put us near God. St. Charbo is not a saint just for the Catholics. He's a saint for everybody. <laughs>